My grandmother grew up in the slums of Prohibition-era Chicago. Her family lived in a small house near the harbor, and one of her earliest memories was of a particularly hot summer when, seeking respite from the heat, she and her sister discovered a seldom-used section of boardwalk near an abandoned warehouse. Every night for several weeks, the two girls would make their way down to the docks and sit together on the edge of the pier as the sun went down. My grandmother vividly, and for a time fondly, recalled the feel of seaweed between her toes as she and her sister dangled their feet into the murky water. It wasn't until years later that she had returned to the pier and found that the warehouse had been demolished. Curious, she made an inquiry with the Department of Planning and Development. Apparently, the warehouse had been owned for a time by the mom, who was using it as a base of operations for a local prostitution racket. It had only been uncovered when an associate began disposing of rival hookers by fitting them with concrete shoes and dumping them into the harbor. Investigating officers had recovered nearly two dozen bodies from the waters of a secluded pier nearby. How had the bodies been discovered? A passing fisherman spotted some of the victim's hair floating near the surface of the water, like seaweed. It is estimated that at any given moment, somewhere between 5 and 10% of what is in your field of sight is shadow, darkness, isolation, the unknown. Imagine how it would be to live in these stagnated, dreary parts, in that crevice between the bookshelf and the wall that gap between the wardrobe and the floor, to live surrounded by a crushing, overwhelming sense of darkness and nothingness, to know that that is your place and always will be, to be left alone, unable to escape, no companionship but your blackest thoughts. Would the darkness consume you? Or would you search for a way out to somehow live in the brightness? No wonder when I lie awake at night the house begins to creak and starts to come to life. No wonder that, in this dark time, I feel the presence of eyes scouring over me. No wonder we hear so many stories of those who die in their sleep. For in this time, the unknown rules over all. And I don't think the light of your monitor is enough to keep away the thing that just moved by your right foot. Kuchisaka Ona is the legend of a Japanese woman mutilated by her jealous samurai husband who murdered her for infidelity, scarring her horribly and leaving her repulsive. Her jealous ghost still haunts places in Japan, usually on foggy nights, wearing a surgical mask, when she will approach people and ask shyly, Watashi kiri? Am I beautiful? The person usually responds, yes. She then pulls down her mask to reveal an ear-to-ear -ear grin, cut by her jealous husband to mar her for her life. Even like this, she will persist. If you answer no, she will take a pair of scissors and cut the same gruesome smile into your own face. If you answer yes, she will disappear, and the second you go home, will reappear at your door and finish the job. The only way of confusing Kuchisaka Ona is to say, you are average, which will confuse this mysterious onryo, or to present her with hard amber candy, or say, pomade six times, will make her flee. She has been seen from the 1970s till the early 2000s, often seen lurking near children, whose innocent answer of yes when asked if she is ugly will lead to their deaths.